With a multitude of opposing forces and interests, the war in Syria is the largest and most devastating conflict in the region. What has remained constant is the suffering of the Syrian people and the devastation of their homeland. Hundreds of thousands of civilians have been killed with each side in the conflict bearing responsibility. What we can do is we can make sure that some of the suffering is alleviated in a variety of ways. For example, UNICEF is very active in Yemen. The International Rescue Committee is another organization that is extraordinarily active in places like Yemen and in Syria. And we can actually understand exactly what the refugee crisis is all about and try to help alleviate the problems of the refugees. Half of them are women. About 60% of them are under the age of 17. About 40% of them are under the age of 11. These are not terrorists. In camps in Greece, for example, 85% of the refugees had, uh, of the adult refugees, had advanced degrees, either secondary uh, education or even more advanced than that. These are not people that you want to keep bottled up. These are not people who should be fated to live their lives in refugee camps. These are people who can be resettled elsewhere and should be. The United States has got to reverse its policy on resettlement of refugees. With regime change as the goal, the U.S. and its allies have backed a number of extremist proxy militias, creating a dystopian nightmare that has spread well beyond Syria's borders. You have massive amounts of civilian suffering as a result of what the U.S. and its allies did in Syria. Then what happens as a result of that? A refugee crisis. One of the worst refugee crises in human history, certainly since World War II, who pays the cost for the refugee crisis? Turkey uses the refugees as kind of a collateral against the West, and it strengthens Erdogan in a way. Lebanese society is pushed to the brink. It's already very fragile. And then you have Europe, where Angela Merkel accepted one million Syrian refugees. And who's winning the elections, the local elections in Germany now? AFD, Alternative for Deutschland, the party that has its origins in Nazi sympathizers. People might feel that what's going on in the Middle East is going on in the Middle East and doesn't affect them at all. So let me give you an example of how it doesn't work that way. You think the Middle East is a problem now or faces problems now, think of what the Middle East is going to look like in the future as a result of global warming. Think of it this way, there are 43 cities in the Middle East that are on coastal areas. Those cities will be inundated if temperatures rise one to five degrees. For example, in areas of Iran, in areas of the Arabian Peninsula, combined temperature and humidity, what's called felt temperature, reached 170 degrees. 170 degrees is the temperature at which a region becomes uninhabitable. This is the future for the Middle East. Do you think that water shortages, for example, are not going to affect whether or not there's war or peace in the Middle East? All these things have a direct impact on the United States, on Americans as well.